the trailer just dropped and wow there is so much info crammed in this trailer it's unbelievable not only do we get to see Takeda right the star of the show but uh, we also got to see some drastic upcoming cameo changes and they look truly wild. It's starting to look that this upcoming Takeda patch, it might actually be quite impactful. Let's begin with the clear star of the trailer, Takeda. So Takeda is back and he's looking better than ever, honestly. Uh, he seems to be still a mix of his uh, Mortal Kombat X Shirai Ryu variation, uh, which gave him these scorpion-like moves, right? Like he gives him a teleport. He uses his bladed whips like a scorpion spear, and we see quite a few examples of that, uh, like here, for example. And then, of course, uh, the lasher variation, which is more focused on actually using these bladed whips all the time. And they're like these ranged weapons that you would know your opponent with it from a range, right, from, from afar. Now, his third variation from uh, MKX seems to be absent, but uh, which is Ronin. But that isn't really a surprise to me. It was the most different of the three variations. Shirai Ryu and Lash are both using the whips, so there's like this common ground while the, the Ronin variation was using laser swords instead of the whips. Like I used the whips in some moves, but I think it was mostly the laser swords from what I recall, even using uh, shooting a projectile from it, throwing the swords from the ground and lifting them up was very different. So it makes sense that you would combine these two variations and then Ronin unfortunately would have to go. So yeah, let's begin by covering his, uh, like his normals and his strings and Many of his strings are clearly directly inspired from Mortal Kombat X. They're just slightly tweaked, you know, they're a little bit different, but similar in spirit. The, the, the basic gist of it, he will be hitting you with long range bladed whips. And then usually end these strings, it seems with powerful overhead looking slams. See here, uh, and you see one example here, and then here's another one. He's definitely giving this MKX vibe without actually being an exact carbon copy of his MKX uh, counterpart. One thing that is very similar looking is his jab string, right? his, or his 112, if you will. Uh, it seems to be just back, you know, it's the same hit, so he ends with a spinning elbow. But it seems you can extend it now by even more hits, and again, he ends with this big overhead looking slam with his bladed whips. He also has a slide move, which it looks remarkably close, not to a, a move from Takeda, but from Triborg, from, of course, also MKX. He is definitely MKX coded, uh, but he seems to have like, uh, yeah, Triborg slide, which is very interesting. It might be very scary. It depends if it's cancelable. All in all, his strings seem a ton of fun, honestly, like long range. They're a bit slower, uh, but not that slow, like it's, we're not talking like uh, Quan Chi levels of slow, I think. And that's to be expected, right? I mean, it's low, It's a lot of range you're covering. It probably allows for a lot of combos starting from very far, so you kind of have to offset that with, you know, a slower startup. And if you're talking about range, his, he has a crouching normal uh, that looks very similar to uh, his old Lasher variations crouching uh, a down forward one, uh, which was a very annoying move, and just like that move, it seems you can just combo off of it. So you can just check people with it, and if maybe he has like a safe normal or anything else, you can just use that. Uh, it looks very, very annoying to deal with. For his special attacks, they almost all seem to have returned, specifically almost all of his Shirai Ryu specials have returned. He has the spear attacks. He has a, uh, the airborne spear attack, he has the teleport, he has that crazy lunging spinning attack. Uh, like, it's all there, honestly. And of course, like, the, the kunais as well, they return, but they're shurikens, but they are functionally the same. Although you can seem to hold these for a very long time as well, as you can see in one of these bits of the trailer. And they still seem that they hit low. They might be mids, we don't know, but they look like they hit low. Which means, if he has any overhead, he will have some very easily accessible uh, mix-ups on his own, you know, without any need of a cameo. Which could be scary. But we don't know if he has overheads, we don't know if this hits low. But he has potential easy access to uh, mix-ups. Because I counted at least like one, two, three, four, five moves that could potentially look 
like they hit overhead. I'm not saying any of them actually will. I'm just saying, if he has any overhead moves, these Churikens, if they do hit low, they will be very annoying to deal with. Right? He'll be very hard to defend against. He also has some new toys. So, like, he can apparently cling to the ceilings now with his spear, which allows for follow-ups. Uh, and God knows what else, right? Like, clearly we can see that he can kind of follow up his air combos with more air combos after clinging back to the wall, which looks very stylish. But, you know, I can already see him just... Uh, jumping in, right, doing a jump in kick and then doing this normal and then, you know, get a new mix up off of that that you just have to hold that. Could be very annoying. And he has a freaking Izuna drop. The greatest ninja move in all of gaming. Like, really. Like, just a little side rant. Every time I see an Izuna drop in any game, it just brings me back to 10-year-old me playing Ryu Hayabusa in Dead or Alive 2 where I tried so hard to do that crazy input to do a single Izuna drop in that game just so I could hear that glorious scream and the sound effects of the enemy twirling around crashing into the floor it is so godlike I love every time every character has an Izuna drop I'm playing him So yeah, Takeda looks very fun, right? Like he's strangely traditional, I want to say, compared to some other characters that have returned in this game. Uh, like I said before, he might have some strong mix-ups with the shurikens if they hit low and he has overhead. It's a lot of ifs, but if these ifs are there, he might be very scary just by that alone. But even without those, you know, he has long range. He seems to have quite a few ways to also launch you, so he'll probably ha he probably can combo you from quite far away. Um, uh, and at the very least, he looks very stylish, all right? Also, have I already told you he has an Izuna drop? Oh, also, okay. Uh, I almost glossed over it, but I can't resist talking about it. His throw with the leg stomp, it has to be a Mortal Kombat 4 Easter egg, right? I mean, even the opponent's pose is nearly identical to the opponent in MK4. Dude, I hope... Uh, your opponent has a low chance of like screaming, Oh, my leg! When you hit them with it, that would be so funny. But of course, it wasn't all about Takeda. There were also three cameos shown. I hold them. Yeah, at Boon, not so long ago, we tweeted about Frost getting a new ambush move. And I clearly was not thinking big enough. Because I did not expect her to just be able to create a new wall of ice that completely changes the dynamic of the arena. Like we've, we've seen this style of move before in other games, like, uh, like you know, in Killer Instinct you have Aganos who can put up a stone wall. Or in a DNF duel you have the Crusader, I believe, that can uh, summon like a giant cross that also acts like a wall. In both games, this move is extremely powerful and degenerate just because you can limits the movement of the opponent, right? He can't run away anymore. But also, it gives you uh, corner combos anywhere in the screen. And usually corner combos are more damaging. Or they give you uh, better setup potential, they give you better knockdowns. Usually they are just more rewarding to hit. And because this is an ambush move we're talking about, what this means specifically is that now, every time you hit, you can confirm this into, but I mean, potentially, you can confirm this into a wall combo. Every time you hit something, you can just summon Frost. While you're hitting them, Frost will put on the wall, and you can just continue your combo and turn it into a corner combo. Every time. That seems insane. And, and who knows, right, but what kind of applications this Frost wall will bring. Like... This, this on-demand corner combo is like the, the baby idea, right? Like, it's very a simple idea. God knows what other people will figure out, right? They will, I'm sure there's other applications where nobody's thinking about right now, but once people start playing, they'll be like, hang on, can you do this? And then we'll find some absolute degeneracy, and I'm all here for it. Yeah, I'm very excited about this new updated Frost. Hopefully, this change will at least let her be picked a little bit in competitive, because right now she just doesn't exist in competitive, right? So hopefully this change, and maybe the other changes she has, if she has any, just, uh, you know, puts her out there as a character, like a cameo you would actually want to pick. 
And Frost's not the only one with new toys in this trailer. Oh no, we get to see good old Ketchup and Mustard, Sector and Cyrax. And both of them got a spiced up version of what they used to have, you know, unlike Frost who got a completely new move. Their moves got changed a little. So let's take a closer look at Cyrax. Now before, when you would summon Cyrax, you could do a bomb setup, right? Where he would hold a bomb and then explode with it. If he could hit, if he would get hit before the bomb would go off, he would just run away and nothing happens. It feels incredibly bad to get hit and nothing happens, right? It's like a waste of using that cameo. So what we see here is now the bomb will drop out of his hands and he will run away, but the bomb will still explode. Now, depending on how early you can make Cyrex drop the bomb, and if maybe you, as the controller of Cyrex, could maybe force him to drop the bomb other than getting hit, that could totally change this cameo, right? Uh, if it's just the bomb, if, if you hit him and it drops, but you still need to wait until the animation is when he's holding the bomb, it might not be that different for the majority of characters. Then I would assume the characters who are already using Cyrex can probably just use Cyrex better, but not a lot of new characters will be able to use it. So depending on how much control you have over this uh, addition, he might change a lot or not as much. Still, it's a very cool addition and it looks more like a classic Cyrex, right? Cyrex in all the other games throws bombs on the floor instead of blowing himself up, so... It's a very cool nod to a cl more classic Cyrex. And finally, Sector. Some would say the superior robot. Yeah, his change is simple in explanation, but who knows what impact it will have. So in uh, before this patch, right, so currently, if you use uh, Sector, he, uh, if you hold the missile, he will use the whole cameo bar instead of half of it and shoot a homing missile at the opponent. Very slow cooldown. It costs all your resources, all your cameo resources at least. It's not a very attractive option because the regular missile is actually quite good. So why would you spend both for a slightly uh, better missile while well, you can have a very good one, which is more available to you? So they've just doubled the missiles. Uh, this will probably already, uh, from what I can just think of, like, you know, as the the baby setups is double missiles will probably armor break if they explode very uh, close to each other. You know, two hits to break armor. So a double missile would probably be a very neat way to have uh, armor breaking setups on the wake up, right? You know, to put them down, summon a double homing missile. Now they're... They, they're stuck. They can't do anything. There's probably combo extensions that I'm not thinking of as well. Uh, but I do think like just having an armor break setup on demand could be quite powerful. We don't know if these uh, cameos are changed in any other ways, right? Maybe they got buffed or nerfed in other ways. We'll have to see whenever the patch, note, uh, patch notes will arrive. News has come that we will have a combat cast on Wednesday, if I'm not mistaken, or Thursday. Uh, I forgot which day it was. I think it's the 18th. Is it the 18th? It might be the 18th, so it might be Thursday. Uh, whatever. Uh, I'll put it somewhere in the video. But we will probably uh, we will see Takeda in action and we'll probably hear about a few changes. I'm sure they'll be very sparing in letting us know what will change. But we'll see, you know, a little glimpse of it, which is good enough for me. Yeah, a, a Sector in particular, he is already like on the cusp of being really strong, right? We've seen him being experimented with, with Shao Kahn, with Melina, with uh, Katana, probably other characters that I'm forgetting. So he's not unused. So we'll see if this double missile pro it might push him over the edge in being a really strong cameo. Or maybe nothing will change at all, right? You never know. All in all, I think this was a very exciting trailer, really well made. Uh, I think it was very good of them uh, to show off some of the new uh, the new stuff, for uh, especially Frost. Frost needs it. So it was probably the most exciting thing to see outside of Takeda, was just suddenly seeing that Frost walk because it has so many applications. Uh, just having this permanent corner, you know, can you imagine Shao Kahn with Frost? 
just having that corner mix up constantly anywhere you want it seems very scary so yeah this takeda patch might be really really impactful uh, we'll have to see of course maybe it's just all hopium speaking i want to be positive and i'll stay positive until we see the patch and then beyond right in a week after this we're gonna even already know more about year two. Maybe we'll already see some characters, right? They're gonna talk about some new fighters. So maybe we'll already get some character reveals year two. Anyway, this week is a big news week. We've got Evo. We've got the combat cast apparently coming. And then next week we've got San Diego Comic Con. Can't wait for all of this. But with all that said, this is going to be about it for me for this video. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.